The Small Business Show, episode 370 for Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where we are small businessing every single week. Sponsors for this episode include a new sponsor, Rate Tracker from Sky Sales Solutions. They are your credit card processing rate watchdog. You're going to want to trust me. You're going to want to know about these people. You're going to want to meet these people. We'll tell you more about them a little bit later in the show. And also Bambi at Bambi.com slash small, where you can schedule your free trial and learn how you can get your dedicated HR manager for just 99 bucks a month. Here, back here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And still here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How's your trip, man? Our trip was fantastic. Yeah, it was nice to go. It was, it was, international travel was actually quite smooth for us. Cool. Um, Yeah, we didn't have any flight delays or anything like that, which a lot of people did. Uh, You know, we went down for some concerts down there. So there were about, I don't know, let's say 5,000 people going so you know so you hear you hear stories about oh yeah my flight was delayed by a day you know people there was one flight out of denver that was delayed because two people didn't want to wear masks on the flight oh come on you would have thought like you knew this when you signed up all right yes you did like there was no question about this like yeah i mean i'm not a fan of masks but same on a plane but but, you're gonna go on a plane that's the prerequisite you know it's like it's like this is not a surprise to you yeah 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 and evidently there were people that were going to the concerts so they were they would have had to show vac status and and recent tests and all this stuff so it's like there's a lot of things you knew and and yet this is the hill you chose to die up i don't know i, I am a very uh principled person i you know i say that i am patently unemployable and I, I definitely have my ways of doing things but i i've learned to choose which which hills i want to die on and that yeah, that just yeah. seems like an odd one in that s- scenario for me like it just doesn't. I don't know. The logic of it doesn't make sense. Like you booked the ticket. You knew. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, well, exactly. like, how is this a surprise? Where, like, you must have planned for this. And then, yeah, evidently because a crew rest or whatever. By the time oh, they, yeah. you know, dealt with these people and got them off the plane, they they couldn't. Um, that was it. You know, they the they, the crew couldn't wow. fly because they were All past. Happy people. Oh yeah, like they were. They had to. They waited a day, which meant. Wow. And there were a lot of people on this plane out of Denver going, you know, probably 30 percent of the plane was going to this event in in Cancun. And so they missed a night that they paid for at the resort. Um, Thankfully, that plane was a day before the concert started, so they didn't miss any of the shows. But still, man, like, uh, yeah, I know. Buy travel insurance, folks. That's my that's my advice to you. I I tell everybody that, too. Especially, Yeah, for sure. We we always. I wish there was a way for us to buy because we have vacation rentals and we constantly tell people, hey, make sure you get travel insurance because, you know, it's a significant investment and we're not giving like we're not giving refunds for COVID anymore. You know, right. We just we're we're beyond that. Yeah, of course. Can't can't do it. This and And I I keep telling uh, my wife, Renee, who runs that business for us, I said, you know, we should just be able to buy travel insurance for our guests. Because it's relatively inexpensive, you know, it's, it's super like inexpensive. Bucks yeah, for, I mean, for a three, four, five thousand dollar stay, yeah. Um, and I, you know, for I don't know yet, but I've been mentioning this more and more. I said, there's got to be a way for us. The the uh, we're we, we're considered innkeepers because yes. you don't want to be land you don't want to be landlords in California. That's a bad thing. Okay, so, all right. Uh, we're, okay, we we structured as that we're innkeepers. There's got to be a way for us as innkeepers to buy or just provide it. Hey, as part of the package. Yeah, we're we provide- we're taking out an insurance policy on your yes. behalf. Yes, and you don't because we. I just like, just mark it up a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, but, t- take the hundred uh, bucks. Yeah, yeah, whatever. As far as I know, we have yet to find a. Uh, uh, a, a policy that would allow the, you know, the, the innkeeper, if you will, to, yeah. uh, to purchase it. So if anybody That's knows about fast. one, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 um, I'm trying to remember the name of the website that we went to, to review, like to find travel insurance, essentially, mm, you know, okay. um, because it, because it, you know, there, there were a million different, uh, 
Wanderwell was the name of the company we wound up going with. And that was the event referred us to them. They said, look, we recommend that you buy travel insurance because just like you, they're like, if you wind up with COVID two days before you come, you can't come. And also, we're not going to give you your money back. And we're yeah. telling you that before you make yes. any purchase. We recommend travel insurance. Get whatever policy you want. But here's one that we've specced out for the event that hits most of the points that we think you, our customers, would want. Do your own research. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But yep. Um, yep. Square Mouth is the, um, is the place that we went to I, I don't think they are an insurance company. I think that's the place that that just found us an aggregator. Yeah, they're an aggregator. I, exactly. Yeah. And I'm I'm looking at it here just to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was Square Mouth was the the place that um in the past I've gone and I think this time too. I you know I did some research and it was like, you know what, this Wanderwell is about the same price as everything else. And it's the place that the event recommended. So if there is a problem they're not technically on the hook, but they're close enough to the hook where, you know, it's like, listen, I did exactly what you said. The provider didn't pay out. Yes. Now that's on you. Right. You, you know, yeah. Yeah. And maybe yeah. it is on them. Maybe it's not. But it's better than saying I went somewhere else. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's great. That's interesting. Yeah. So um, th but this is an interesting like if we take this and and zoom out a little bit. This is a, an interesting thing for any business. Think about what your customers need in order to benefit from the core product and service that you sell. And and maybe there's an uh you know a value add that that or or a whole other line of your business that can be a profit center for you, right? Like you, you know, in this case probably not. You probably don't want to start your own travel insurance company, right? But I, you might. Like if you were doing if you had vacation rentals in all 50 yeah. states, it might be a, a, a great thing and say, look, and we mandate travel insurance. We're our own carrier for it. Here's the things that we cover. It's, you know, an extra 250 bucks for the rental. And, you know, as, as everybody knows, the insurance is a risk reward game. And yeah. so you just get to put that money. That's pure profit right up until you have to pay it out. But who are you paying it out to yourself? Right. Like, yeah. it's, and, and, or you may you may get, uh, you know, referral income if you correct. like, you know, like the uh, concert that you went to, if they're pointing you to a website that. Oh, I have no the, doubt they got a cut of the take there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So that's it's always a great thing. We're going to talk about pricing later in the show, but in a, a new uh, concept for us, yes. we're going to talk about decoy pricing, which I'm interested to learn more about. Which yeah. Is cool. But this is interesting thinking about those things yeah. and, and either, like you said, offering it, at least a referral or maybe like I can't imagine that it is impossible for an insurance company to provide you with the service that you want for your business. You just need to find the right one. I think you're right. Yeah. I, I just I like I I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm a pretty good hack lawyer, and I can't think of a legal reason why you wouldn't be able to take out a policy on behalf of somebody else, especially in a very limited sense. Yeah, right? it's like, an event, right? It's I mean, an you, event. You get yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, you probably have to carry yeah. liability coverage. Sure. I mean, I obviously. My regular insurance would... Uh, Facilitate you know, that. Yeah, as a writer on the... Uh, yeah. I have to look, have to look that's at That's the place to... That's where I would start. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. See, yeah. doing this show is good for us. Look at that. We figured it out. Like <laughs> I always said, I always learn the most. Yeah, yeah. It's it's true. We we we. It is our competition every week to see which one of us can can come away with the the most value out of the show. I I will say over the seven years and and you know happy anniversary again. Uh, yeah. Over the seven years we've been doing this, like I, I, my businesses have increased in value for me and for our employees and for our partners in ways that I can directly attribute to lessons I've learned by doing this show. So it, I would agree. I'm right in there with you. Yeah, it's amazing. Definitely. Folks, I hope the same is true for you. Feedback at businessshow.co. Tell us what, you, it, and it doesn't have to be from this show, but tell us the the things that you have learned that are of value to you and your business. We'd love to share those lessons. So feedback at businessshow.co. Absolutely. Uh, and so today we're also going to talk about, in addition to decoy pricing, yes. we're going to talk about one of our favorite subject, subjects, fear, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> but in a different way. We're going to put a different spin on we're, it. We're going to, we're, yes, frame. it's not going to be, don't make fear-based decisions. We have another thing to share with you. It's true. Yeah. And it, speaking of sharing, I would love to take this opportunity and share more details about the two sponsors that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, if that's okay with you, Shannon. Yeah, let's do it. I'm interested to learn more. All right. Hey, you know, payment processing is a confusing thing, right? And then on top of that, the rates and fees associated with accepting credit cards as payment get even more confusing. We were talking about this on a recent episode, how it's like it's really hard to know what you're actually paying for a transaction. Sure, you can read the discount rate, but as we all know now, that's not even close to the whole story. What if there was a free solution that allows you to easily and automatically understand your bottom line credit card processing rates and fees every month? Well, Rate Tracker is a free and simple way for you as a small business owner to know your costs to accept payments so you don't get lied to or taken advantage of by your payment processor. And let us say it again. We know that your payment processor is probably out to fool you. That's what we love about Rate Tracker presented by SkySail Solutions, your trusted payments partner. Too many times those payment processors intentionally leave their merchants in the dark. And as a responsible business owner, Rate Tracker is your tool to level that playing field. Take back your hard earned money. Rate Tracker makes it super simple for you to understand your cost to accept payments and provides you with free access, free access to trusted payments experts like SkySail Solutions that can give you free advice on how to optimize your payment acceptance program. So you're going to go to sky-sale.com slash rate tracker. That's sky-sale.com slash rate tracker to sign up for the only service that is dedicated to helping you know your numbers. They can keep track of your payment processing costs and alert you immediately if there's ever a rate increase. You got to go check this out. These folks are the real deal. They know what they're doing and they want to help you. Go to sky-sale.com slash rate tracker or click the link in the show notes at businessshow.co. And our thanks to Rate Tracker presented by SkySale Solutions for sponsoring this episode. Listen, do you run a small business? That's amazing. Um, I have a question for you. Who's running your HR? If the answer is, eh, I'll figure it out myself, or honestly, no one. Remember that one employee complaint can turn your world upside down. This is not a good thing, right? HR is not just about avoiding risk. As a business leader, you should do right by the people you employ. And that's why you're going to love our sponsor, Bambi. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses like us. So you can automate the most important HR practices and get your own dedicated HR manager. First, Bambi's HR autopilot automates your core policies, your workplace training, your employee feedback, all of that. Then your dedicated HR manager helps you navigate the more complex parts of HR and guides you to compliance available by phone, email or real time chat. And listen, you know, an in-house HR manager can cost up to 80 grand a year. But with Bambi, and this is the part that gets me every time your dedicated HR manager starts at just ninety nine dollars a month. That's right. Ninety nine dollars a month. Even better. There's no hidden fees. You can cancel at any time. It's amazing. It, it really we, we've we've obviously been involved here with Bambi for a long time. It is exactly as simple as I am telling you here. You're going to want to check this out. And there's a good reason that Bambi has received thousands of five star reviews on Trustpilot because they know what they're doing and they do it well. You run your business. Let Bambi run your HR. Go to Bambi.com slash small right now for your free HR audit free spelled B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash small Bambi.com slash small right now for your free HR audit and our thanks to Bambi for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, let's. Fear is a thing we like to talk about on this show. And we yeah, like to. All of us have it, right? Uh, yeah, it's a natural <laughs> thing, right? I mean, yeah. it, it protects us from being eaten by cats, right? <laughs> That's I, right. I mean, it, yeah. it's there. It, it, it serves us well as long as it is serving us and not paralyzing us. Yeah, and, yeah, that's right. And like we, we always, 
you know, there's a quote, famous quote on this show, you know, that from one of our earliest guests, Brian Friss from Digistore, where he commented about not, uh, don't make fear-based decisions. And, you know, we've really taken that to heart. And But today, and Dave, you brought this to my attention, is a concept of using fear as a compass to put you point you in the right direction, which I think is really interesting. I, I love, uh, yeah, I love this. It was a, a Twitter thread that, uh, that I came across, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And I, I just loved this idea. This was just a series of business advice. And the, the, one of them was use fear as a compass. And, you know, in every situation, our response is to imagine the worst case scenario. And so we have to reframe fear. And yeah, yeah definitely. It, it it's, you know, it's, it's not about avoiding pain. It's about finding possibilities. Right. And, and so, it, you know, that this, this woman, Sheila Gonzalez on Twitter said, uh, instead of dwelling in the pits of despair, understand that fear is a compass pointing you in the right direction. Whenever yeah. you face trepidation, and this is the part I love. Don't ask, what if I fail? Ask, how can I find the potential? And I really like that. It was like, okay, wait, you know, and, and this, this is sort of, I have, and I think I learned this from you, uh, speaking of our conversation earlier in the episode, where if I'm faced with a decision about, you know, should I take path A or path B, the path that my gut tells me is the hardest is often the right path to take. Right. It's, yeah. it's yeah. like, if afraid, okay. if it, yeah, I, I always say if you're afraid of it, you know, that may be that a sign that success lies in that direction. Success lies in that direction. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's exactly this is that using fear as a compass, if you're afraid of it for whatever reason, because it's too hard, because it's something new, right? Like, you know, and I, I guess, I guess where I would dig into this is to figure out what my, what my fear is based upon. Right. Like, is it is it because it's super dangerous? And, you know, if I if I leap off that cliff, I'm certain to die. Right. Like, OK, well, maybe there's a good reason for this fear. But sometimes it's just, well, it's it's fear of the unknown. OK, well, that's yeah. a that's a legitimate fear. All fear is legitimate. The question is, you know, do you know what it is? And and then do you choose how to react to it? And and so just taking a breath and saying, OK, well, what? What is it that is making me afraid and acknowledging whatever that is and then evaluating it from an objective standpoint? Like, okay, well, this yeah. isn't going to kill me. This is, I'm afraid of it because it's new. I'm, I don't know. Sure. I, I'm not an expert at that. Okay, well, fine. Like, great. I remind myself of all the things I'm also not an expert at or wasn't and now have become because I did it and practice helps make perfect. Oh, my calculus teacher used to say perfect practice makes perfect. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work that way. We like mistakes here. Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, but just figuring out where that fear comes from it is, uh, it often is enough to reduce it to a point where it is fuel and not something that, that turns me away. Yeah. I like it. And, and, to me, you know, a couple of the biggest fears that, you know, I think are so common, I've, ha I've had them continue to have them, fear of failure oh, and yeah. fear of rejection. Uh, and I think that if, to your point, if, if you can redefine failure, if you can uh, use our systems-based approach, there's always going to be some successes along the way to failing, even if you fail. And in the end, don't, you know, reach exactly where you want it to be. Um, you're going to tease out some successes along the way. You know, a, a quote I really like from Nelson Mandela was, I never fail, I either win or learn. And if if you can shift to that mindset, it really uh, helps you overcome those two um, types of failures, that uh, things that we're always worried about. I like that. That's a good quote. Yeah. Yeah, like and, and kind of pulling a little bit more out of your concept, too, is focusing on achieving a positive outcome instead of avoiding a negative one, right? Right. It, it's We're going to make this work, and something good is going to come out of it instead of what actions am I going to take so I don't fail? You know, that, that it just doesn't work, and that, you know, there's a, a 
a quote in that Twitter feed I really like about people taking um, the path of least resistance. Yeah. And, you know, they kind of settling for mediocrity. And, and that that is something I've always been afraid of is settling and, you know, falling into this kind of stagnation, if you will, of not challenging, challenging yourself. And uh, so, you know, understanding that, being self-aware of that will allow you to embrace those fears that otherwise can keep you from moving forward. It, you mentioned two fears, the fear of failure and the fear of rejection. Very real fears, very normal fears uh, and and natural to have. Nothing wrong with you if, if you've experienced those. I certainly have. Uh, it, as, as you've been pointing out, Shannon, the 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 idea is how to take those and reframe them as fuel in the right scenarios. But there is one fear that I think might be the biggest one. Um, we humans are naturally change resistant. We like our habits. We, because they're shortcuts, right? It, it, they, once we get into a routine, things are comfortable and you've learned to, become uncomfortable when things are too comfortable for you. But that's not a natural thing. That's something you've clearly learned over time and a, and a valuable thing. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, I'm sure. It has. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Right. But the, um, the fear that I think is the most powerful one and the, the one that we all need to be afraid of uh, the most is fear of success. And I know that it sounds crazy to say that, but success brings change. In fact, it often brings more change than failure, a lot more change than failure. Because if your business succeeds, whatever that means, let's say it, you know, you increase revenues by 10, okay, tenfold. Well, that's amazing in and of itself. However, what other changes come along with that? How many more employees do you need to have? How, right. Yeah. How, how many, you know, do you like now do you need to worry about a different kind of insurance for your business? Are there all there are? I don't I'm not going to ask. Are there? There are a lot of other things that are going to come along with as responsibilities with that 10x growth. We all want that 10x growth. We say we want it. But at our core, that's massive change. And that fear of success is, you know, I've, I've always said it's the flip side of the fear of failure coin. And I, I think the fear of success is far more powerful uh, and far more stagnating than the fear of failure for most of us. And I, I think I, I for me, certainly, uh, and others that I've spoken with and, and sort of had this conversation with, whenever thinking about a new thing, it's not the failure that I'm worried about. It's the success that I find like, oh, gosh, what is this going to mean? And I've experienced it with employees, too. You know, I had I had one person. This was probably 20 years ago where they went in one year from making about thirty, thirty five thousand dollars a year to making about eighty thousand dollars a year. We changed their position. We put them in a position of growth where they had some risk to manage and, and they did very well with it. And through that year, there was a like there was a point where this person was like almost paralyzed from, from not being able to, you know, to keep them from working. Yeah. And it was because they didn't know what to do. They're like, do I deserve this extra money? It, like, this isn't me. This it's like, this isn't the past you, this is current you. And it also is future you, but future you could be even more than this, but let's not talk about that right now. You know, <laughs> like let's yeah, not throw it, too much fuel it, on this fire. Right. You yeah. know, but yeah, the, a lot it, of it, I think is to, that, you know, some of us have that imposter syndrome. Yeah. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And it, I think we've all known people or ourselves that uh, you, you you can easily self-sabotage your success. Oh, yeah. Based on, based on those fears and based on the changes that they bring in your life. And I've had partners and people uh, that I've been involved in that when significant amounts of money have come in, either from selling a business or some large deal that we did, I've seen it where it can really, I mean, I had a guy that, you know, I did this with and he had, he had to go see a, a you know, going to therapy yeah. <laughs> because it was just, it was so overwhelming. And you hear something you've thought about your whole life. And maybe part of that is um, you, many of us think that uh, it related to money anyway, that if you just had more, it would solve so many of your problems. But in reality, often creates a lot more problems that yeah. you have to, or, or different problems. 
um, that you have to look at with a different mindset. And um, I've seen it where it, folks, you know, do it. And then I've seen people that never reach the level of success that you think they should because they, they stop themselves. They self-sabotage. Oh yeah. They self-sabotage. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I say they, which is true. I've seen other people do it. I've also seen me do it. Oh, we all do it. yeah. Yeah, we all do it. Yeah. yeah and and so just being aware that it's a thing that we all are, can potentially suffer from, uh, you know, look for the signs of that. Like, wait a minute, who's stopping me really here? Really good. Point it's, that out. It's me. And I, yeah. you know, we were talking in the beginning of the episode about the things that I've learned that I, I can, you know, point to my businesses being more successful and me just as a human being more successful in large part because of the show. A lot of it is that just being like, okay, you know, I, like this is, I, I'm going to, I am the person that is the most in my way. I, I would yeah. say if we rewound seven years and, and, uh, and you asked me, well, what's the, what are the things stopping your business? I would have pointed at many external factors. Yeah. Uh, and, and I now know that that's not true. <laughs> it, it brings me to a concept I really like. I call it extreme accountability. And, mm. and I would encourage us all to embrace that. And it, it, it's, I've mentioned this before on the show, um, and I read it years ago, and I don't know, I don't remember at the moment who I read it from, but it sure. was, you know, if you want to give praise, you look out the window, and if you want to cr criticize, look in the mirror. And as a manager and the leader in, in, you know, a number of small businesses, that has always served me really well. Um, and if you embrace accountability that most of the things stopping you are yourself, it, it puts you in a better position to fix the problems and, and always be adjusting for success um, because there's no one else to, to point the finger at or no. And sure, you're going to have situations. Oh, there, there are but, things. I mean, yes. like, yeah, the, the pandemic was not yes. our fault. Right. It, it, and it did impact my businesses. Yeah, in, of course. In the in the end, it mostly had a positive impact uh, on. Well, you on my have businesses. a problem solving mindset, as we just recently did a show about. Correct. And and I would I would say that most of the people listening to this show that have taken the time to find it, to listen to it on a regular basis, to send you know questions or you know things back to feedback at businessshow.co, those folks are thinking differently than the average person and they want more. Yep. Um, so I think that, um, that, that, you know, embracing, be accountable for just everything, even if it is really beyond your control, you can say, Oh, well, maybe I could have reacted better. Sure. And this is how I, this is how I would do this. And you just train yourself. It's not being, I want to clarify. It's not coming down on yourself that it's your, everything is your fault. No, but it's no, your responsibility. It, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's you are responsible. Uh, and because of that, you train you and you, it's a brain hack. You're training yourself to, um, to impact things that normally maybe you would think wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be able to impact in your life. Right. But because you have this blanket of accountability, just, just wrapped around you, you just go, Oh, I can fix that. I, I know if I do this, yeah. and I lean on this lever I can, I can do that. Yeah. I, I know that taking action is often the right thing. So let me figure out what the best next action is to take. That's it. And yeah. Yeah. And just plow forward and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. But take it. You're right. Taking the reins and, or maybe better said, knowing that you already have the reins in your hand is the, is the way to approach it. It's like, yeah, I didn't cause the pandemic, but I, I mean, I'm still driving the bus here. So what am yeah. I going to do? You know, not going to, not going to stop driving. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And, and one, one of the things as I was researching this um, fear as a compass concept, as I came across a, um, a Ted talk by Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week guy. And he's got, had, he's battled lots of depression and, and yeah. um, di you know, different stuff. And his concept is he creates a fear list. You know, I love, I'm a list guy. Like we talk Ooh. about the success list and, and uh, he, he, the way he, he frames it is he creates a fear list to define your fears. And what that it does is allows you to learn about the cost of inaction. If you don't do these things, what, 
what happens, right? Yeah. And uh, so we'll put a link into the show notes about that. Um, he, you can go to the transcript or, or listen to him talk. He's, he's a really valuable guy to. He, he is a fascinating person. I've, I've, yeah. you know, I, I learned about him with his four hour work week book, which is a fantastic marketing phrase. Uh, it is. And, and yeah, yeah. It, even he, though it wasn't quite that, it's not it was, quite that, but, it, but it, way to, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, it, what it, what it highlighted for me reading that book was the idea of creating systems to to yeah. make sure things get done and to and delegation was really a big part of it right like he he created systems he has for that particular pro- project and and you know like most wealthy successful people he doesn't have just one income stream we could probably do a whole in fact oh, yeah. maybe we should do a whole other show about this you know, the, it. I, I saw a, a, a post on Facebook talking about sort of the flip side of it. It was like, you know, the, somebody, some people out there think that there's like one tax break that all billionaires take advantage of not to pay any taxes. And it's like nothing could be further from the truth, <laughs> yes, right? Exactly. There's there's a tax break that, you know, gets you 1% here and 2.5% there and this, that, and the other thing. And and then you whittle it down and, and now you're taking advantage of, of the entire system that you didn't create necessarily, but it's somebody else's system. Fine. No problem. But, you know, and, and the same is true certainly for me. And I don't consider myself uh, a, a wealthy person like a Tim Ferriss or, or, you know, or, or I'm certainly nowhere near billionaire. Uh, but you know, having multiple revenue streams is a great thing, but for that one revenue stream, Tim Ferriss, really just built a bunch of systems. He hired a bunch of virtual assistants to deal with like the customer service and the things that need human attention in real time. And then he could just check in with these. And he essentially built a business that on the surface appeared like it was a sole proprietorship. Uh, and that was selling his, his supplements, right? I think that was, yeah, that was right. what the four hour work week was all about. Yeah. But I mean, there were I, I don't know if there were hundreds of people involved. There might have been there were certainly, you know, a dozen people involved or maybe more like the people making the supplements, the people, the virtual assistants oh, yeah. he had, you know, answering his his emails and phones or whatever the customer service was and fulfilling orders. He just wasn't doing those things. And so he could check in and he was essentially the, you know, chairman of the board of this company he created of one but it really wasn't just one. But it, it was a it's well, a it was a great book to read. I I, I well, enjoyed he, that book. He, he had the foresight to say, well, you know, I should write a book about this. Correct. Right? And, He's and a, that is yeah. what changed his life. It it, it wasn't the supplement. I, I and I don't know, you know, the exact numbers or yeah. details. But yeah. if you listen to him, at the, you know, on his podcast, um, you know, I don't think it was the that supplement business that changed his life. It was the fact that he wrote the book, and then he started pushing the the concept in the book, and it, it just goes to our, you know, we talk about our revenue stack yeah. concept here all the time. And I, I always tell people that are successful, I'm like, you, sh- you should write a book. We, we had, you know, people on the show that before that have done it, we've done it. You know, I've done it personally, we've done it together. Um, that's just one way that you can start, you know, and build your followers. You know, yeah. there's that thousand true fans, um, you know, concept that, you know, if you find a thousand people that'll pay you 10 bucks a month, um, you know, to, to really follow you and get your information, y- you can have an income that, you know, in, uh, a livable income that then allows you to do other things. And that, to continue you to can build, build from state, that. Right? Yeah. You don't stop there. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Put that yeah. system in place. Yeah. No, Tim Ferriss is a fascinating guy. I saw him. It was a couple of years ago. He interviewed Michael Pollan at South by Southwest right after Michael Pollan's um, first book on psychedelics came out. And I can't, uh, the name isn't coming to me. He's got a new book called Your Mind on Plants. But, oh, the the, the book was How to Change Your Mind. And it was about how uh, psychedelics can be used to change your mind. And Tim Ferriss sure. is a very big proponent of uh, psychedelic therapy. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, I, I think it's the key to for him to unlocking his anxiety and, and yeah, opening up himself. Yeah, he suffers from... Uh, bipolar depression yeah. that runs in his family. So he talks a lot about it. Yeah. And this is kind of, yeah, for sure. He's, he's an interesting cat. That really uh, interesting guy. But like you said, yeah. super self-aware and, uh, and Michael Pollan's another person to, to follow. He's a, he, you know, he's written eight or nine, maybe 10 now New York times bestsellers. 
uh, started with food uh, and and then moved into uh, entheogens and and plants and psychedelics mm. and things like that. But yeah, yeah, he's yeah, two fascinating guys, and to be able to see them both on stage together was like, wow, this is Great. a meeting of the minds in so many yeah. ways. Yeah, that's awesome. But, yeah. So uh, on this guy, I, I want to talk about decoy pricing, but I think it's such an interesting concept that we should bump it to next week. I'm into so it. we could. Yep. So we could take a deeper dive. Um, and and I th it, it's definitely, you don't want to miss that show because it's really interesting. You may already know what it is, but we have a different, maybe a little different spin on it. Um, the takeaway for me on this, you know, fear as a compass thing is everyone is afraid. We all have various fears. It's built into who we are, but learning how to manage those things is often the difference that, that gets you away from the pack out yeah. of mediocrity to build and create the life you want. And whether it's business related in your personal life, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, we hope that you take some of these things to heart and we'd love to hear, you know, tricks and hacks and things that you've done to overcome the, these natural fears that we all have feedback yeah. at business show.co or come up to the LinkedIn mastermind group at uh, business show.co slash LinkedIn and share your thoughts up there. Yeah, so you'll absolutely. be helping somebody else as well, at the same time as you help yourself. I guess. That's right. Yeah. No. It and it's you know it's interesting as you were saying that we're and and I I very much am you know proponents here of creating systems and systems become these automatic habits that happen if you will but very intentional habits and and routinely refined habits. At the same time in this episode, we're saying beware of habits and things that are cyclical for no good reason. So it's yeah. always, always evaluate the systems that are in your life, either the ones that you have intentionally created or the ones that have been created without your intention. And make sure that you're not stuck in a cycle that's either harming you or not letting you flourish because it is the human condition right we we very much as we become adults we learn to take shortcuts uh if we didn't we would be completely overwhelmed with every decision we had to make in our lives right it would it would be too much uh but every now and then it's good to take a minute and evaluate all of those shortcuts or at least a few at a time and say is this does this you know every morning i wake up and i i you know make a cup of juice or i make a cup of coffee it is that a good system or is that a bad system? I'm not, <laughs> like I'm not yeah. saying that it that, it, that, that, that that's necessarily good nor bad. I'm just you saying. Start me on a whole. We're gonna, it's a whole other show. Ask good the habits. question. Habits. Ask, yeah. ask the question about your habits. Reevaluate your habits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. That's good. All right. Thank you for uh, for listening, folks. As Shannon said, uh, feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear from you. Check out our sponsors: sky-sale.com, s-a-i-l.com, slash rate tracker. Bambi.com slash small and keep living that charmed life. Let us know what you think. 